さあみんな一緒にスケベが大好き強くなりたい Finally, it's time to get into the real meat of the age genre. My channel specializes in fan service and beautiful naked women. Therefore, any species reviewers should have been part of my arsenal ever since it aired in winter of 2020. Man, that winter was good until a certain disease came and ruined the year. Well, considering the premise of the show, a disease is bound to infect the population. As so many damn people are frequently the brothels of the region. That's right, they made an anime about reviewing sluts in the whorehouse. Well, since most harem fantasy and isekai had been already done by this point in time, people had to be creative and go straight to the point to be original and present some shocking content. Ninfu, Ningen. Elf, ni norm. Ah. どうもピンとこねえな。The species reviewers, it's a story about three weird individuals who frequent brothels on a daily basis and make reviews of the females after each night. We're gonna find a new species to bone and then review. It's our job after all. Yep, and it's hard work. The clever spin of the scene is that in this weird reality, there are a variety of species to choose from. Demons, elves, succubus, fairies, cat girls, or other type of fantastical entities have all came together to work in a huge pleasure district. A diverse selection of brothels abounds as well. Sleeping with individuals of mythical nature seems to be the main activity of the people. Even when they hang out together in the inn, female bodies in the pleasure it brings. Is to be all they talk about. Elves are hot, no matter how old they are. I don't get what you don't like about them. They're not as all gross and rancid. Can't blame them. Also obsessed about beautiful, pale skin brunette, and my wife list is ever increasing with each harm anime I get to watch. Not so excited about humanoid animals, however. I'm all for cat girls, elves or succubus, but having slime, cows, and Felines as partners is a bit too exotic and foreign for my taste. This is why I didn't enjoy that Monster Girl anime. It was all good with the snake lady and the harpy, but then they had to add a centaurus lady. And I started to question my life decisions, like I do now. This anime is as close as you can get to hentai and still be allowed to be next to Naruto. Hey, been getting your rocks off? Yeah, you know it. Man, where the hell did you slip off to this time? You'll have to read the review to find out. Damn, I mean, damn. And I thought, I could DXD had the risky fan service. In the species reviewers, is a masterpiece when it comes to exposing female skin and doing love making scenes that are spicy and acceptable for an ancient anime. Episode three is my favorite. A main character transforms into women. And have intercourse with female prostitutes. <laughs> so much fan service and nothingness. The anime is showing us nearly everything there is to see on a woman's body. So much delicious and thematic nudity alongside explicit erotic scenes. Not to mention the awesome big bouncy boobs and different set of breasts from a diverse cast of female hookers. This is a perfect paradise. The good part, however, is that even though the premise is simple, the anime manages to deliver some compelling adventures in some interesting characters. In an action anime, the action usually falls on the skimpy, beautiful woman who shamelessly exposes their skin to the naive main character. If, however, while looking at both and touching the gorgeous skin of female models, is indeed a prominent aspect of the show. It's the main characters who carry the franchise forward, with their thematic interactions and charming personalities. With a human main character archetype, Tank is a classic, cheerful, and determined protagonist who has more mainstream taste in women. He does enjoy all kinds of different species, but is usually fascinated by standard representative of beauty. 
For example, Stank really seems to favor female blonde elves as his main companion. Hope to see you soon, Stunky! Yeah, you know I'll be back. <laughs> Man, elves really are the best, aren't they? I've yet to meet a lady elf that I wouldn't love to bone. A beautiful, voluptuous blonde bimbo is a classic choice for a woman, and Stunk is very much happy with the services they provide. The catch, however, is that, in contrast to most other species, elves can live for extremely long periods of time. After dozens of centuries, if they don't catch some funny diseases, other types of entities, like fellow elves, wolves, fairies, and others, can sense the age of repulsive smell when she's over 100 years of age. Humans do not possess this particular sense, and Stank is usually sleeping with hot elves whenever given a choice. You're kidding me! That chick is over 500 years old! So, what of it? She's an old hag, man! How can you even get it up? This was a somewhat clever spin on the hot noble female elf archetype. It is common in fantasy genre to consider the most beautiful creatures. Not here though, female elf do not age like good one. Otherwise, Tank is a cool guy who seems to only care about his hobby. He tries to live life according to his primal desire, and I can respect that. He's so commanded and willing to get dirty on any type of exotic female he encounters. I usually agree with his reviews. He has a stereotypical horny dude's approach to intercourse, which makes him more relatable with the audience. <laughs> Stank is our representative in this world filled with massive booths and other vulgarities. For the three main characters, I like said the least. He's a weird fellow elf who likes to sleep with older, with older human ladies. It's kind of weird and also disgusting to see what he's into. <laughs> I know it's a matter of perspective and elves can smell sensual old females better than human skin. Still, I think he has rather poor taste in women. I don't want to play clips of that lady because I find her repulsive. But take my word for you, fellas. She's fat. She's fat and awful. Plus, she's one in her 50s. She must be carrying some weird diseases. Otherwise, uh, seems to be Stan's best friend and a fellow brothel enthusiast. They are both completely hypnotized by female beauty. And even though they have different understandings of what makes a girl attractive, their heart is, at the very least, in the right place. Why bother with politics, quests, of acquiring or acquiring social status when you can simply waste your life in the species forehouse. I guess when I put it like this, your life ain't that great, but that may sure is fine. Never have I seen so much nudity galore. God dang. So many titties hanging everywhere on the screen. The show made it impossible. You managed to deliver one fast service and DxD and to love rule combined. And for that alone, I respect this franchise. There's also Kremo, who is an angel with both genders. This is a weird little fella, kinda shy and inexperienced, but a team player nonetheless. He's also enjoying the pleasures of the female body despite his introvert personality and apparent inexperience with women. You see, because my angel halo is broken, I'm not able to use my powers at all right now. So while I wait for it to heal... Many episodes end up with his friends learning some interesting aspect of him. Either that Grimo has a huge deck and he's too big to be even allowed to sleep with fairies. Or later that he enjoys the company of a hyena. Aza is her name and hyenas possess both types of gender. Which kind of makes criminal swing both ways. There's also 
my dearie, with a happy waitress. She's usually disappointed with tanks and the obsession of foreign KD with random medical species. I give interspecies reviewers a 7.5 out of 10. This is not an anime for everyone, but still a rather unique title of the infamous edgy genre. <laughs>